back to the Scott Ballard Show, our first show of 2014. Happy New Year, Coach. Same to you. And Happy New Year to everyone watching us today on the Warrior Sports Network. And Coach, let's take a look back at last weekend on the road to start the new year. Uh, a couple of games up north, Bemidji State and Minnesota Correction, will start on Friday against Bemidji State. Um, and really just an outstanding defensive performance by the Warriors in a 62-31 to victory. Uh, you know, it... You don't expect to have lopsided games like that in conference play, and um, so when it happens, it's you know you're kind of scratch your head. It's like how how did that happen? Um, it, it it was a gradual, steady uh, performance by our team. Um, you know, defensively, we uh, played a lot of zone, and uh, Bemidji had a lot of problems with it and didn't attack it very well, and then. Uh, some of their key players got in early foul trouble in the first half and, and actually it continued throughout the game. So that, that forced them to play their bench a little bit more and made it a little easier for uh, our team to uh, defend. Um, you know, anytime, uh, anytime you have some of your key people that are playing less than half of a game, uh, it, it forces other people to have to try to beat you and do more than they're accustomed to doing. But, uh, you know, it was a fun game because we were able to play everybody. Um, probably the, the biggest downer of the night was that uh, uh, one of our freshmen, Callie Hackman, uh, injured an Achilles in uh, pregame warm-up. So, uh, you know, our depth has been hit with uh, the loss of Jenny Tuttle and the knee injury uh, on December 21st. And, and now with Callie Hackman and her Achilles. So we're just hopeful it's not going to be a long-term thing and that we could get her back, you know, in a couple weeks. But um, it, it's an opportunity for other kids uh, to step up and uh, show that they can uh, play. And, and then uh, the next night we played at Crookston, and, and uh, we didn't play with the same energy that we did against Bemidji. And uh, Crookston, even though they split with Bemidji during the season, uh, the last three or four years, they've been a tough matchup for us because they run a lot of four out, one in. Uh, they're one of two teams in the league that have all five uh, starters averaging double figures. Uh, we lost uh, we lost uh, their their best three point shooter in the second half. We lost her uh, uh, in the zone a few times, and she made us pay for it. Uh, what really the two things that really hurt us uh, during the course of that game was that uh, second half. Abby Bush and Kelsey Andrews both were in serious foul trouble and uh, barely played a half game and and. They're key people for us, not just an offensive end, but also the defensive end. Um, that combined with the fact that uh, Crookston scored 19 points off of our turnover. So we had, uh, we, we were up or down three at halftime. <clears throat> Started the second half, it, they had the ball, they hit a three, and then uh, they got a steal and a run out layup. So it went from three to eight in a hurry. We were playing catch up the rest of the night. Um, I was proud of our kids. The seven minute mark, uh, we had it down 51 to 50. Then they went on a 12-2 run. We turned three point shooter loose a couple times and then uh, just uh, miss, missed some shots uh, when we needed to answer. But, um, you know, it's a tough matchup because they're four out one in. Um, you know, they could dribble drive you enough that uh, you had to respect that. And then they were really good about finding uh, shooters on the perimeter and, and they, they hit enough to, you know, make it difficult for us to you know, come back. Point guard Tessa Wallace had a really fantastic weekend for you. Highlighted by that game against Crookston, uh, she had 19 points and 9 assists. Those are both career highs for her. Um, someone who is, is really beginning to um, to play even better than she normally does at that point guard position. Yeah, you know, she's, she's playing with confidence and uh, getting more aggressive and uh, doing a lot better job of decision making and picking her, her spots where um, it, it's time to to look to score and, and drive to the rim. Um, and it's important for us, uh, for Tessa to stay out of foul trouble as well, because now that you know our, our backup point guard, Jenny Tuttle's out for the rest of the year, that means Tessa has to play more minutes. It means that uh, Connor Nagel may have to spot play at the point some, as well as uh, 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 Allison Hawking. So um, at least we've got some time to start working in that direction, but uh, uh, you know, Tessa's going to do the best job for us at the point guard, which should be expected from a senior. 
You mentioned Connor Nagel, someone who has really played well as of late. I think she's got double-figure scoring in five of the last six games. Yeah. She's a player who's really come on as the season has progressed as well. Yeah, Connor's uh, improved a lot uh, since Thanksgiving, and she's gained a lot of confidence. Um, she's very active on the defensive end, and I haven't looked recently, but it wouldn't surprise me if she leads us in steals. Uh, she rebounds really well for her size, um, and, and she's – She's really uh, started to consistently knock down shots when, when they leave her open. So uh, we're happy with the way that Connor's playing, and we, we need her to continue to do that. Well, she'll have a chance to continue to do that along with the rest of this Warrior team this weekend as the Warriors host the University of Mary on Friday night and Minot State on Saturday. Coach, we're going to get your thoughts on the upcoming weekend doubleheader later this week here on the Scott Ballard Show.